Hello, you are tuned in to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Keisha Boyd, and I am joined by my wonderful co-host, officially Jorge Cafe Con Leche. Thank, thank, better than thank, thank. <laughs> <laughs> You I'm fabulous. How are you? I am just great. How was your I'm week? Well, first of all, I'm loving your braids. Oh, Wait, or is that you. twisties? These are faux locks. Oh, faux locks. Yes, darling. They are faux looking faux fabulous. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going great for you? Yeah, I just got back from San Antonio. Beautiful oh, nice. city, great town. How's the weather? Uh, the weather was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's so big in Texas. <laughs> um, but um, it was, I was at a tennis tournament. I had a okay. great, wonderful time. Weather oh, was good. great. A little dusty, mm -hmm. but you know, it was Texas. All right. Well, we have lots to get through. Oh, Steamers we sure probably do. have all that good stuff all for that you. All that good stuff. But? Oh, but first, coffee. <laughs> Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Quite a few things coming up. I know that you're right? gonna share with us on our steamers. I feel like a man in a coffee shop. We get all kinds of drinks are coming out. I got fries coming down. Yes. Biscuits. I mean, coffees, <laughs> lattes. Size, everything. But I have some steamers yes, for you this us. week. And you know, steamers are the stories that come out, and um, they're not necessarily piping hot only because we know there's gonna be more to come Absolutely. in the future. So the first one that I'm actually really excited about. Hello, we're going back to black. Back to Eric black. Holder on MSNBC. I wasn't even watching it mm -hmm. uh, live. Just boom, put out there that you know he's thinking about running in 2020. How awesome would that be? Like, right? what kind of the support would be astronomical? Oh, it's on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think that's just like the beginning. I, yeah. know, I know we're going to hear more about this. I don't know other people are going to come out the woodwork. I yeah. just know that right now the Republican Party isn't really saying who they're going to support. Mm -hmm. It's always that like, you know, we're going to wait and see, whatever. But I mean, it's about to go down. Anyways, but I just know we're going to hear a lot more, more about that later. Um, another steamer. Hannity. What's behind door number three? Door number three. <laughs> Tell it's us. Anity. It's Anity. Oh my goodness. What is going on? I mean, that is a bad bromance, if oh. you ask me. Well, I don't know, of course, everyone has heard and seen all over the news. We didn't yes. have to attribute it to anybody, but it's all over the place that it was revealed in court that Hannity, Hannity was uh, Michael Cohen's, which is 45's attorney, right. supposedly, whatever. Um, he was like the client that they didn't want to disclose to. Uh, wow. Let me, that's Stormy Daniels. <laughs> A hot mess. Look, there's just more coming from that. That was just a. <gasps> Right. Like burn my tongue kind of steam, That's right? Crazy. And it's, I know we're going to hear a lot more about that later. And then the other um, steamer that, again, I know it's going to become a piping hot topic mm -hmm. was what just happened in Tennessee. Yeah. So to give you a little background, so uh, Memphis mm -hmm. is predominantly uh, a black community. Yep. The majority, African American. Mm -hmm. But the majority, uh, as far as the government is concerned, in the state of Tennessee, yeah. Republican majority. Right. Well, there was a statue taken down of a Confederate general mm -hmm. who was also a KKK leader. Statue taken down. Mm -hmm. The Republican majority voted to take away the $250,000 that they had budgeted mm -hmm. for the bicentennial of Memphis. To snatch, wow. snatch the coins. And it's kind of like an outrage. Again, I don't understand. You have the majority of this, you know, of Memphis is black, but yet, you know, well, you know how they Maybe do. Maybe you want to fix my blazer. Well, <laughs> you all stay tuned after I just, this break. Yeah, I just know more is coming from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stay tuned. After this break, we'll be back with our Piping Hot segment. The fourth annual Derby Delight is almost here. Get your hats, brims, dresses, and fly suits ready. This will be one of Tampa Bay's finest affairs, featuring a live band, derby bites, signature beverages, bedding stations, and more. And let's not forget a fashion show featuring you, our guests. 
who will win best hat and most debonair this year. Join us for the fourth annual Derby Delight, Saturday, May 5th at the Courtyard at 5508. Get your tickets today. Visit www.blackinthebay.com for more information. All right, thank you for staying tuned to Mocha in the Morning. We're back with our piping hot segment. Piping hot, piping hot. Yes, and we are bringing in our correspondent, Miss Kia Shakur, caught in the car with Kia hey. on YouTube. You guys follow her. She's Hi. awesome and joins us every week. Hey, girl, how you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Pretty good. Girl, so, thy hair is so late. Isn't she cute? Caught in you that. See, look, you see it all highlighted. You know, I'm like, go yeah, ahead, girl. Highlighting. We're having a fabulous <laughs> hair day. I'm sad. <laughs> bring it for you guys because Jorge is always calling me out for something so I have to make sure everything is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, encouraging you to live and look your best life. Oh my goodness with his <laughs> laid edges girl. <laughs> All right so piping hot let's go ahead and get into it with Miss Baychella. Yes. We even had to do just a special little oh just piping God. hot segment for Baychella. Baychella. Okay Listen. so you know she did the thing. She did it. She Snatched every wig, Ooh. laid every edge, mm. and educated a whole bunch of people yes. on this stage. Sure like, I respect Beyonce so much because she takes these opportunities with these grand stages and where she knows everybody's watching, mm -hmm. and she m intentionally mm -hmm. sticks to her culture and shows you, look, I am black all the way. I am not afraid of you. There's nothing you can do to me. And guess what? And I'm going to educate you today. And we're going to give you a little bit educational too. So yes. this is our show and tell of Baychella. <laughs> the Bayhive is celebrating because no one can deny that Beyonce slayed this year at Coachella. Filled with mixed themes and social messages with a fabulous nod to the HBCUs, historical black colleges and universities. Not only that, she gave us the family reunion we were waiting for in the DC universe. Baby Daddy was there, and Solange was there dancing along with her big sister. Who run this mother? Well, obviously, Baychella. How you feel about Baychella and all that greatness? Oh, well, I have to say this, and I think, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not a Beyonce fan, I'm not a stan. I like her, I think she's great, I think she's an awesome performer. But are we really surprised that she gave this type of performance? Has she ever given anything less for any performance? No, she hasn't. And what? I think she did what she's supposed to do. She saw as the first African American woman to perform at Coachella, she was about to bring everything black possible. I'm surprised she didn't bring Black Panther onto the stage and just do a whole Wakanda thing with people in outfits and drums and a whole a whole get up. So I thought it was great. And as a FAMU alum, I know you're a FAMU alum girl. So uh, yes. as a FAMU, I was like, yeah, that looks straight like a FAMU marching 100 homecoming, you know, halftime performance. And I was look, like, yeah, this, look, this looks great. Beyonce regular. was invited to the white people's picnic. Yeah. She brought soul <laughs> food and told everyone to eat, eat it. it. And they the loved it, and yes. they want more. <laughs> no, I feel bad for the people who did not know what the theme was. Because there was a lot of, what, okay, let's be real. Coachella's a white people thing. It is. It's a white people thing. But a lot of people didn't know half the stuff she was doing. The HBCU, the Greek stepping, yes. the singing the Black National Anthem. I feel bad that they were so lost, but I'm glad she got to educate people because now they're going to go look it up. Right. Yeah, and she's basically doing the same thing we're doing, educating. If people watch more Mocha in the morning, yes. they would know that to you too. I'm just That's saying. right. <laughs> and she also brought back uh, Destiny's Child, yes. which was super cute. Hey. They were so cute. Yay, Michelle. Yes, and Kelly. Hey. And she also had Solange, Solange and her baby husband. Daddy. Yes. You know, so... It was all good. All right, one other great <gasps> piping hot, Kendrick Lamar. What? Yes. Pulitzer Prize, like. Sna I, everyone snatching trophies. I'm right? like, what? A Pulitzer Prize for your album? Yes, ma'am. Damn. Damn. Damn, yes. right? <laughs> it, it is amazing. And just so you guys have a little bit further background, before for Pulitzer Prizes, music wasn't included. Mm. Um, they just um, added in jazz music, I want to say in 1998, 2000. It could be wrong. Feel free to correct me. So he's the first, you know, 
hip hop artists, even almost pop artists or music artists to win this award. He's, I think there's only two other people who won it. So it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And he's this outstanding artist. So congrats to him and congrats to all the Pulitzer Prize winners. Absolutely. All I'm saying is, damn. Damn. So, yeah, congrats, Kendrick yeah, Lamar, that. on that. That's really, really awesome. All right. Starbucks. Yeah, no This congrats. is not Starbucks. Yes. Shout out to the Portico Cafe. Thank you. Who supplies us <laughs> with our coffee and drinks and everything we need and allows us to, to film this yes. awesome show here. <laughs> our tall, flat our whites. Our tall, flat whites. And... <laughs> Y'all Starbucks is trying mess. the system. Now, let me, let's say this. Okay, no. Starbucks yeah. had two young black men yes. come in. They mm -hmm. were waiting for a business partner. They kicked him out because they weren't purchasing. And the guy comes in right as they're being arrested and says, hey, what are you guys doing? Right? It's an outrage. So they've had people protest. Um, for me, you know, it's, 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 it's a fault of the management and the employees yeah. that call the cops. But I think it's also on the cops as well. Because I'm like, why, why do you have to do all of this? That's so extra. So extra. That's so extra. You know, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, and to give it to Starbucks, the CEO came out yeah. um, and spoke out against this. Um, not only that, but uh, now they're shutting down, multi, you know, right. over 8,000 stores. They have specific training for this issue. I yes. do think down all that in this situation, bad call on that staff and the management at that particular store. Because how many times am I hanging out? Yeah, you know, right. You know, All sorry, of us. not doing yeah. nothing. We're just waiting for a ride or whatever on our laptops and stuff like that. Have you ever had a negative experience at Starbucks? I haven't experienced like that in Starbucks, but I have had an experience like that. And people don't understand how humiliated it is to have a cop called on you for absolutely no reason. And this happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the whole incident with me quitting my job. And I literally was standing outside waiting for me to pack up my stuff because I was out of town when all this happened. And I'm waiting outside, playing on my phone, minding my own business. A cop walks past me. I pay it no attention. He comes back to me and said, I'm here for you. And I burst into tears. People have no idea how embarrassing it is as a black person when you're not doing anything to have the police called on you for no reason. And then in my case, the cop was sympathetic and wasn't going to do anything because he was like, I think this is really stupid. I don't see you doing anything. But because they called, I kind of just have to stand here. But don't worry, you're fine. And he was really like trying to comfort me because I was so upset and embarrassed that this company where I wasn't doing anything would call the police on me. And it was it was a horrible moment. Wow. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's uh, um, it, seriously, law enforcement needs to take a good look in the mirror. Yeah. And they need to start from the ground up, from scratch. I and mean, it really is. It's just... It's, um, and just, just one more thing. I know we have to wrap up this section real quick, but if Starbucks is going to have this policy, it needs to be for everybody. If no one yeah. can loiter, if no one can use their laptop just sitting in there or whatever, or if we're out of town, I have to run to the bathroom at Starbucks and come back out, it needs to apply across the board. It just can't apply to the black guys who might look threatening. It has to apply to everybody. Right. No, you're absolutely, absolutely. right. Absolutely. All right, so Miss Lena Wade. Hey, girl, you know me. I love a one of color on a cover of a magazine. Yeah, she is slaying the cover of Vanity Fair. Yes. And it's so awesome to see her there. Because, you know, I love Lena because she is so confident in who she is. Mm -hmm. and Emmy she, winner. Emmy, Emmy winner, winner. First time yes. black woman comedian. comedian. What? Yes. For comedy yes. with, with Master of None. And her, her show, The Shy, on Showtime is awesome, too if you haven't watched it. So we're so glad to see that she is gracing the cover of Vanity Fair. Kia, when is your Emmy coming? I don't know, but it better be coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as Lena is concerned, a lot of people had issues with the cover because they thought that Lena should have been more made up or had on a suit or more glam, but this is exactly what she wanted. She looks like her. Exactly. People look like someone had to make her up or make her better. She looks like her. And I love Master of Nothing. It's a fabulous show. And if you haven't seen the Thanksgiving episode of Master of None, that is the one that was completely written and directed by Lena, and she's also in it. You need to go watch it on Netflix. That it has Angela Bassett in it. It is amazing. It shows how good of a writer and director she is. It's just awesome. an amazing episode. All right. And that's the see. I think she looks fabulous in the she cover. Does. She does. She does. I love her. Hot. I'm like, what is she looking at? <laughs> Listen. You're so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the I'm elements. Hate, girl. Of earth, wind, and fire. Oh, Lord. When is you mean earth, wind, and fire. Fire. Yeah. Duh. With a D. When what in the mail madness? Oh, my God. <laughs> this need, Taylor Swift. Do you need a your own mocha moment right Listen, now? Listen, I need a moment because I just can't believe. First of all, I don't know who to blame more. Look, while you <laughs> take your moment, 
Let everybody at home watch this clip. Yes, watch this clip. To the no, 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 here to the no, here to the no, to the no, no, no. no. Um, <laughs> now that um, everyone uh, has an understanding as to no. what your tea is right now. <laughs> there is no earthly explanation. Hell to the no. <laughs> to the no, no, no. Like, why, first of all, why would you even give her permission to do that to Ooh. your song? So anybody. Ooh. Oh, oh. Mm. Who, right, <laughs> who in the heel said, oh, this sounds great, Taylor? Look, I will say, Earth, I know she got to have somebody that, on her staff that's got a little bit of soul. Right, I understand. No, not even that. I just somebody. think, way to go, Earth, Wind, and Fire, collecting some royalty checks, right? Yeah. But. Yeah, some, 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 thing, some money ain't good money. I'm just going to say. All money is not good money, right, Kia? I mean, yes. It, what in the crusty crab? Burnt mayo, <laughs> like plain raisin and potato salad. Raisin and potato, yes. Raisin and potato salad. Was a good, what in the banjo? What made you think a song as iconic? Hold on a second. What made you think an iconic song like September that has a full band and people singing and a guitar and the whole thing that you thought you could take your lily white behind and put a banjo to it and make it good? A banjo. That's what you heard when you hear September. A banjo, girl. Bye. And the sad thing is, it's not a bad song but it's one of those things where you cover at the karaoke bar and no one else hears about it. it's not a song that you need to pull out on youtube and go oh look what i did no no <laughs> and i was all. like do you remember i don't remember nothing about this i don't want to remember anything <laughs> if about you this. race it from if, if, if i just heard this if i throw it away throw it, throw it all away throw it all away throw it all away, <laughs> throw it all away. <laughs> this version at a wedding, I would immediately leave the dance floor and go tell the DJ, you need to stop and you're immediately fired. Like, and that's, right. that's how I feel about the YMCA. Listen, hello. All right. <laughs> now, listen. Miss, um... Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Okay, see, touching her body. Remember, that was a steamer. We oh had Mariah God. as a steamer when she came out and I said, you know what, that's not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Something else is going to happen so I'm going to put it in a steamer. Yeah. And now it's packed in hat. Mm -hmm. Because apparently Mariah Carey and her manager, apparently they do not belong together. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not even a little bit. Nope. This lady's saying that Mariah has done sexual acts in front of her. In front of her. And like, comes out and just naked. Yeah, now. according to TMZ, y'all. That's we're what just, TMZ says. We're just telling we're just you what telling the tea is. <laughs> yes. You know, don't hold us accountable, but... I mean, Kia, I mean, do you typically walk around naked with your manager? With my with my interns? When I had interns a long time ago, I would... She's like, with my interns? <laughs> <laughs> okay, get it Let together. Let me explain. I'll explain why. When you have a team and when you have a big team, especially when you have a manager or someone like Mariah Carey, if you're go, go, go and changing, 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 then you're going to be naked in front of your manager, especially if your manager is female. Even yeah. better, if you're only with this manager all the time, if you see like a bump or you think something's True. weird, you're gonna literally go, oh my God, look at this down here. Do you think this is weird? Or do my, is my boob uneven? Like, I don't right. know. Like, you're gonna do stuff like that. That is not sexual harassment. It's poor decision making because you shouldn't be that close to your manager. But I don't think it's sexual harassment. And by the way, this girl's story is already bogus because she's already been dropped by three attorneys. This is her fourth attorney to take her story on because no one really believes her. So, well, I don't know because sometimes Mar remember when Mariah Carey was on TRL and she was like in her I don't know I think she's she's a little out there sometimes with all her like mannerisms and she could be a little extra I mean I love all that <laughs> but I'm just saying girl you're gonna catch a case and because I'm you're the type of manager that would be naked in front of his team you're the type of <laughs> manager that'd be like no I haven't changed mm -hmm. no, I'm very discreet home. with my me yeah. oh! I don't just let anybody be touching my body. <laughs> oh, man. I need to throw some shimmer on your tongue. <laughs> some glitter. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now let's talk about this this uh, clap bag rolling on into uh, our clap I bag. I love it. Now, we have Miss Nikki Haley. Nick oh, darling Nikki. Darling Nikki said that she was not. I am not confused. She threw the shade right on that. She's and not she scared, is not scared or confused. Or confused. So, Miss Nikki Haley said, I don't get confused. 
Uh, this comment was uh, directed back at Trump <laughs> and his people saying that she basically said she didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah, right. Right? Not and crazy. She's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, this is not fake news I'm reporting. I mean, Kia, were you confused about this, or, like, at all? Absolutely not. And I'm going to put, her name is Nimrata. I don't like the name Nikki. Her birth name's Nimrata. Um, she's in that Joy Reid category of don't you dare try to embarrass me or come for me because I will send you back home with your bags confused about why you even came to my house with this mess. <laughs> like, why did you come over here? No one's fit for you. Don't come here. Yeah. Especially, I, I'm a Republican and I'm very proud of Nikki Haley's accomplishment. I may not agree with everything she does. But when it comes to her job, especially at the UN, mm. she's very clear about it. She goes through a lot of people. She has a team of writers that write her stuff. She gets approval from the White House and then she puts it on Twitter so no one's confused about what she's saying. But for them to do this, it's really, really sad. Yeah. And I just love the fact that here's a woman, right? You have this, you know, the whole White House filled with all these like men, right? And you have the one, the, 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 the one, that one, that bitch, right? <laughs> Who's like, oh, and she's no. like, no, not me, mm -hmm. not me. And Don't let this like, Congratulations to her, girl. And she even did it. She's a woman of color. Wait a minute. Yeah. She even so. did it in a classy way. She did it in a very classy way. She didn't do it like what Trump did and get on Twitter and say it. She was a direct person in the press and said, no, let's just let's clarify some things. I'm not confused. Okay, I'm not confused. <laughs> right. This is what happened. This is what was discussed, and this is what was said. But thank you so much. I appreciate your input, and that to me is a classy clapback. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. I like that. I like that, girl. All right, Kia. Thank you for joining Thanks, us today. Doll. We'll you're, see you next week, you're honey. Fabulous next ever. Guys, Mwah. 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 <laughs> Yay! And don't forget to find Miss Kia Cut in the Car with Kia on YouTube. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> This week in our signature blend, we are talking about the impact of historically black colleges and universities. Take a look. Everybody, this is Keisha with Mocha in the Morning, your host. Um, this week's signature blend was all about um, spotlighting the importance of historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. And I'm up late trying to put this piece together. And I said, you know, Keisha, why are you trying to find a, a clip when this is something you know firsthand you can talk about easily? And so I just decided to quit and just do it. As you can see, I have on my FAMU t-shirt, FAMU taught me, Florida and Florida and University taught me so very much. It taught me how to be uh, assertive. It taught me how to be confident. It taught me that excuses are worthless. It taught me how to be a boss, right? That means I'm built on shared success because I had the opportunity to meet so many wonderful young men and women um, as an 18 year old girl and I grew into a woman by the time I graduated. And um, I have lifelong friends because of that experience at my HBCU. Um, it taught me to be, uh, to believe in, in myself. It taught me that I can do anything. It also uh, gave me an opportunity to, to help others and support their dreams and we supported each other. It's the, it's the nurturing atmosphere in HBCU that I love. We're not just numbers in the system. We're not just students. Our deans knew our names. Our teachers know our, you know, knew our names. If we had issues, we can go talk to them. And I think that you need that. At any you know uh, university or school, I think that you need that um, to to. I, I just think it makes the experience that much better. We felt like family versus just students. We are a family.
before we get to our mocha moment, I want to say a special thank you to Tristan, Aaron, Stacy, and Crystal. Thank you so much for liking the Mocha Morning Show Facebook page. Now, again, if you have a mocha moment that you want to share with us, please, you can Instagram us or tweet us at Mocha Morning Show. No G with an N. At Mocha Morning Show. And this week's Mocha Momo is actually my Atlanta family. I was in San Antonio playing the um, a tennis tournament. And uh, we were on the bleachers having a great old time supporting each other. Trying to like snatch the trophies. And uh, this is this week's Mocha Moment. Hey Atlanta family. Well, this has been an amazing, amazing show. We thank you once again for watching with us. Uh, we are your Mocha in the Morning host. I'm Keisha, and this is Jorge. Hi. And we certainly appreciate you. Tell a friend. Join us next time. And once again, thanks for joining us. Have a fabulous weekend. Yes. How you got